And so, so this is a, it's, it's a two-hour workshop, so we'll see in practical terms how we will be using uh, LXD. Um, so the main effort, the main benefit of this uh, workshop will be that everyone who wants to use LXD to be able to, um, let's say, get familiar into using it. Uh, one of the most important uses of, <coughs> of, of LXD is that uh, you can, uh, instead of installing different applications onto your Linux system, so that your Linux system will have additional libraries and all of a lot of stuff, what you can do is that for each task you want to do, you might choose to create an LXD container, install the applications in there, and once, let's say, you are happy with it and you don't need it anymore, you can just delete it. Um, this is this. This is not a microphone. There is no speakers here, right? Which means that uh, this microphone is only for the camera. Yes. So, which means that if you cannot hear me, you have to ask me to talk louder. Okay. So, as I said earlier, so as I said, was that the benefit? I think that for me, the main benefit of LXD is that if you want to try software. Uh, if it is suitable, you can put it into a, a container and run it from there and have it running in, running it in there. And once you, are, you don't need the software anymore, you can remove the container and your system is nice, pure, and clean. That will be, I think this is the message that I have for today, and we will see how to do that. All right? So, um, uh, LXD offers uh, what we call uh, uh, system containers, which is similar to, uh, vir um, to virtual machines. Uh, they, have very, they have a very good similarity in the way that you use them. Um, so an LXD as itself is what we call a hypervisor. It's a, a service, it's a, it's a service that will help you manage containers. Without LXD, you will have to type many commands uh, manually and do a lot of work. But with LXD as a hypervisor, as they call them, you can do many tasks much easier. So you will see that all these easy things that we will be doing, this is thanks to LXD being a hypervisor. So, uh, Ubuntu has LXD uh, pre-installed in several versions. And uh, if it is uh, other distributions, uh, for other distributions, you, you will need to install LXD in the way that is available. It, LXD is available in uh, several distributions. So um, I, I can see there are four laptops here. So. Uh, this one is running, you're running Kubuntu 18.04 LTS. Uh, you're running, uh, Sabella, the same? I run at 18.04. Yes. And uh, for LXD, you can see 3.17. You're running 3.17. Excellent, which means that uh, for your case, uh, you're running this version of Ubuntu, and since it is 3.17, you're using the snap package. Okay. Um, who, who is next? You're running Arc Linux. I'm installing the package. You're installing it. Um, okay, so with this version of Linux, it has a specific uh, version of LXD. Uh, can you see there which version of LXD is being installed? Three point two. Okay. All right. How about you? Okay. So, all right. Uh, the, the latest version currently is uh, uh, three. 
318. Uh, so, Isabella, when you, when you run 317, it means that because it is a snap package, at some point when you have internet connection, it will auto upgrade to 318. So this will happen automatically, uh, and it will happen probably today or tomorrow. Uh -huh. Okay, let's uh, do some practical stuff. So, <clears throat> uh, here is a terminal window uh, of uh, a Linux version. How do we find the version of, of our Linux of, if it is Ubuntu? Uh, we run this command. So this is 1804.3. It is the latest LTS version. Um, do we have uh, LXD? Is LXD in, installed? So if you see here, uh, we have a version of LXD. And this version of LXD is LXD 3.0, which means that this is a fresh version of Ubuntu 18.04, and it comes with LXD uh, 3.0. Uh, so w what happened here is uh, this is a newly created uh, Ubuntu. And this is the command I, uh, I ran as soon as I created it. Um, so I created this, uh, uh, this is Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, what I did first is I ran uh, command number five, which is I installed the snap package of LXD. I did this thing earlier uh, while waiting so that it will, uh, because of the speed issue of the internet. Uh, and then, uh, so I have installed the, uh, the snap package of LXD. However, uh, this, as it is now, this version of uh, uh, Ubuntu al already has the, Deb the Debian uh, package of LXD installed at the same time. Now, this is a common issue and problem, specifically for, for when you have Ubuntu, that if you have an LTS version 18.04, uh, it will have already installed the Debian package, and when you install the snap package, uh, there are small complications happening. So we will see here how to resolve this issue. So to figure out what is going on, we, tr we, we run these commands. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, you can verify what is your version of, uh, uh, this is a version of LXD, the service, and above is the version of the command line client of LXD. Although it says LXD over there, uh, this is the command line client of LXD. There is no LX, there is no capital letters LXE installed by default. Uh, if you have heard about the old LXE capital letters, these are not installed at all, uh, you have to install them specifically if you want them. But the old LXE, capital letters, is something that is not very uh, user-friendly. Okay, so if you want to figure out that, okay, I have an Ubuntu, a Linux system, uh, and uh, you want to see what kind of versions of LX, of L, what version of LXD you have, you run these commands and it tells you. Okay, it's very important to get this thing uh, right. So what happened here is that over here, uh, it has the Debian version, which is 3.0, but I installed, as you, as you have seen earlier, the snap package, which means that two things exist at the same time, and I have to figure it out how to clean them, up, clean them uh, how to clean them up. So, if you, if the system already has the Debian package of LXD, and you want to switch to the snap package, what you do is you install the snap package, uh, LXD. Eh? So you install the snap, uh, the snap package, and you have to do what we call migration. 
migrate, my, uh, migrate from uh, the Debian package to the snap package. And here is the command to do that. So the snap package is, uh, is installed and uh, we are using the migrate tool that will just uh, take any containers we have created with the Debian package and will convert it into the snap, pack, snap, snap package. So here it shows some information. The migration process will shut down all your containers to move your data. Once it is moved, this destination LXD will start and apply needed updates. And finally, your, your containers will be brought back to their previous state, completing the, translate, the migration. Are you ready? Um, as far as, yeah? Images? Uh, you can choose one of them to migrate. Um, the migration does not change the containers at all. What it does, it, uh, it, it changes the, which LXD uh, hypervisor will be managing uh, the containers. So the containers by themselves do not change at all. There is no, let's say, upgrade that will make the containers better the containers will stay and remain exactly the same as they were before, but they will be managed by a different, a newer version of LXD. Uh, here the process, it takes a bit of time. Um, and once it finalizes, it will show a message there that, okay, we have completed the, the migration. Uh, the next step we will do is that, do you want me to remove the Debian packages? We select yes, and then it's done. It has been migrated, and that's it. Um, no normally, this, is, this process is much, it's, it is much faster. Uh, this is my travel laptop, which is like very slow, but if I lose it, I will not be very unhappy, so. Uh, it just happens to be a bit slow. Um, so while this is running, we can have a look a bit about the nodes. Um, okay. So while it is running, we can actually so, uh, learn a bit about snap packages for LXD and verification. So this thing here is running. We're going to open up a new uh, a new window. Um, so. Uh, we will try to figure out some information about the snap packages. Uh, with snap packages, the command is uh, uh, snap. So if you want to figure out what snap packages are installed, we'd run this thing, snap list. Uh, at the very end, you can see that there is LXD uh, installed. So. We had snap list, and then we go snap info LXD. It shows a lot of stuff. So this is the, the information of the LXD snap package. Uh, here it has some general information, description, text description. Um, exp some explanations. And over here it says that, okay, you have the um, snap package. Here are some commands that you can use to run. 
So apart from line, running, let's say, LXD, LXC as command line, uh, it says here, for example, you also have LXD.migrate. There is also a tool to do benchmarking, which means that you can get, you can create, let's say, many, many containers to see how fast is your system with benchmark. Uh, there is a check kernel to check if you're using a different distribution, like Arc. You can use uh, check kernel to figure out uh, if the kernel is supported or if something is missing. And there is also this command called lxd.lxc. So this is the plain lxc command line. Uh, it's so, it is shown here as lxd.lxc. And the reason is that uh, uh, you can use it as plain lxc just because in the snap package they have created an, an alias. So when you, when you run LXC, you just need to type LXC, the command, and it will run this thing here. And the way it works is that the, when they packaged LXD, they created um, an alias so that if you just use LXC, it will work. You don't have to type the full, all this thing full, okay? Just LXC and you're okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you have noticed there is a difference between this window and this window. Can you notice the difference? In green. Come again. Is there something else which is different? So the thing is, is that uh, uh, in here, so the thing is, is that I wanted to prepare this uh, so that when I will show you how to do the migration, I did not want to mess up with my LXD uh, installation because if I mess it up, it will be a lot of trouble, you know, with the workshop. So what I did, I created uh, an LXD container uh, with 1804, which already had LXD inside. So what you are seeing here is an LXD container. And in there I installed the snap package and I'm doing the translation, the migration. So this is an expendable uh, LXD container. Uh, it is, I think, the reason why it does not continue is because I forgot to add some specific flag for nesting. But, so what happens here is that uh, here it does the migration, but this thing here is just an LXD container. It does not finish because I think I forgot to put the nesting flag. So what I can do now is that since, uh, since we have shown how migration works, I can kill this thing and delete the container. Uh, on a proper desktop computer, this will take about a second or, or, or less. Uh, in the meantime, let's see a bit more about the snap, snap package. So here we can see, um, so we, here we saw the commands that are available from the snap package, uh, snap package. And then over here, we can see the channels. Um, th these are the channels that are available in the snap package, which means that uh, when you uh, install LXD from the snap package, you have the opportunity to select which version of LXD you want to use. So LXD from the snap package is not only LXD 3.18, you can change channel and you can go back to any of the other versions. So this is other versions that we saw earlier. Uh, the version that sticks with, LX, with Ubuntu 16.04 
is LXD2. Uh, LXD3 is with Ubuntu 18.04 and so on. So the list of, chan of channels starts from there. The first channel is stable. It goes all down to here. So you can use snap commands if you want to switch from one version of LXD to another. Uh, this set of versions, 3.0 stable, is the version that will, it has support, uh, it has five years support, and it goes to, uh, from 2018 up to plus five years, so it goes to 2023. If some person wanted something stable that doesn't change much, they can switch to this package and do their work. However, for us, what we will do is we stick to the stable version, 3.18, which has all these like, nice features coming. And, new, and the new version of, uh, of the stable version, a new version appears every month or so. And it gets like very nice functionality happening again and again. That's like really, really cool stuff. Okay. Um, do you know how to, uh, some snap commands, how to refresh and um, uh, when you have snap packages, automatically this is the, this is the service of snap will do the uh, update of any new versions of the packages. So this will happen by, by snap for you automatically. So in the case of Isabella, Isabella, you have uh, LXD 3.17. Uh, okay, so you can, uh, how did you verify? Did you run this command? And it says 3.17. Okay. So the snap command, if you want to force to the update to happen now, is this command here. Snap refresh. I'm not gonna run it because I have other snap packages and if I run it then it will take some ages to finish. So snap refresh is if you want to force the update to happen now. So if you were to run snap refresh, uh, it will do an update, an a, a, a force update of LXD now to the new version. It's better not to do it now because it will take uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you can still use LXD as it is now, but it's going to be 317, which is totally fine. Uh, the other issue is how do we switch from one channel to another? Uh, this is an, a snap command. Uh, we're using snap switch. So what you do is you run snap switch you specify what channel you want to switch to, minus minus channel equal, and you put one of those things we had there, for example, 2.0.beta, for example, and then you write the name of the snap package. So if you, for some reason, you wanted to switch to another uh, version, here is how the command will look like. Snap switch. Uh, channel equals, as an example, okay? Because it appears above and LXD. So this is a command to switch channel. And when I press it, um, it will register that the snap package for LXD will follow this channel. It will not do immediately the update, the switch. So uh, now I'm gonna be uh, playing a bit dangerously. So I'm gonna press enter. Okay, it, it asks for a password uh, because of LXD, uh, for snap package. So now I have switched uh, to that old version. If I were to actuate to do the update uh, now, I will have to add as well snap refresh. Now, if I press it now, it's gonna make a mess to my computer because it will switch to a very old version of LXD. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and switch back to stable. 
so I, I save the day. Uh, is uh, the the Alex? Uh, um, uh, where we say LXC, this is the name of the command line program. Uh, there used to be an older, uh, another project called LXC with capital letters LXC, uh, but we have not touched touched this one today, and we will not touch it at all. Okay. Uh, the what we say LXC with capital letters, uh, this is the older project without hypervisor. You had to do all the, all the work yourself. So whatever we show today is LXD. And uh, the two commands that we are interested in is the small letters LXD, LXD as it is here. This is uh, one command, and the other one is LXC. So, uh, this LXC is the client, the, the, the client utility, and the other one, LXD, small letters, is the hypervisor. All right. Come again. Uh, what is the snap? Is uh, the snap package? Um, is, uh, is, the, is the package of the whole of LXD. It contains everything inside. You can use uh, LXD on Ubuntu without Snap. Yes. Uh, the developers of LXD, they're doing most of the work uh, with Snap packages, which means that you have uh, bigger variety of versions when you use uh, the snap package. The variety of versions, we have seen them um, over there. So if you use the snap package, you can select any of this. Uh, if you use the Debian package, this is available only on the LTS versions of Ubuntu. So 18.04. 18.04 uh, Ubuntu has the Debian package, and it's the only, uh, it's the Debian package, and it is only one version which is available. How do we see the version? Um, this is a command for Debian packages. How to see the version of um, the Debian version of LXD. So I use apt policy LXD, and here it says that uh, there is a candidate, uh, LXD version 3.0. That's the only version which is available as a Debian package for Ubuntu, okay? And you can see that, is it installed? No, none. So if I do apt install uh, LXD, it's gonna go and grab uh, this version of LXD. Okay. So we go back. We go back to the uh, to the container that I created for my testing. I gave it the name the host, and this is where I did these uh, things. So I. Uh, I stopped the container. This is the container where I was doing the migration, testing migration. So I'm done with testing the migration. I stopped the container, and I deleted it. So it's gone. Um, <clears throat> so when you use LX, uh, LXD, it's very important to have these commands lxd minus version to see what is running. This has to be the same version, okay? 
it is the, the, the same version. If you get some weird errors, just go here and check to see what's going on. This is from the snap package. Uh, you only get the problem here when you do the migration from uh, Debian package to the snap package. This is because the, the path name will be cached in the path, if it makes sense to you. All right? So we, we have installed the uh, uh, LXD. Uh, the, first, the first part is the installation. The second part, which is very important, it is re necessarily required, is to do the initialization. And initialization means that you come here and you do, you run this command, LXD init. That's the, that is like the most critical uh, thing to get right. Because this is something you run once. Uh, you have to get it, let's say, right. And then you can do all the nice things with LXD. That's, that's like very, very important. Uh, when you run LXD in it, um, the biggest decision, decision you have to make is uh, where to store the containers. There are different ways to, uh, different locations, different ways to store the, uh, the containers. And if you choose uh, let's say the proper way is going to be fast and it's going to be reliable. Um, and there are several options when you um, um, to choose for the containers. Uh, by default, when you install it in any of the uh, distributions, uh, it will ask you whether you want to, send, to save it. If it is Ubuntu, uh, uh, you will get several options. The two main options, I will say, and I, I will suggest for you to use is, if there is either ZFS or ButterFS. Okay. If you use Ubuntu with an official kernel, then ZFS is a very nice and good option. You can just select ZFS, and everything is fine and, and nice. If you are using a different uh, distribution, uh, like uh, ARC, uh, then in that case, you have to check whether ZFS is supported. Most probably, it's not going to be compiled in the kernel because of some issues. Uh, in that case, you can just use ButterFS. And uh, if you have a spare partition, empty partition on your computer, you can say that, okay, I want to use, let's say, ZFS or ButterFS, and I want you LXD, go to this empty partition and put your stuff there. It's gonna be empty partition, unformatted. You say to LXD, okay, go put the stuff there and we'll do it for you. That is one option, but in some cases you may not have, let's say, a spare partition on your laptop or your, most probably on your laptop or desktop. In that case, there is an opportunity for you to, uh, instead of creating a partition, it can create a very big file, like 15, 20, 60 gigabytes. It will create a, a file, and that file is gonna generate uh, either ZFS or ButterFS. So that, uh, it is also an acceptable option. Okay, networking, um, here you can just keep the defaults and it's gonna be just fine. Uh, I'm not gonna be running uh, LXD in it uh, here, but we will see how it looks. So here, uh, this is a screenshot obviously. So here I run sudo LXD in it. I'm using the LXD command for the hypervisor. So it's sudo LXD in it. And I'm asked all these questions. It is one at a time and uh, if you notice, I do not write anything over there. I just use the defaults. If you press enter, uh, it gives you sane defaults, easy defaults. You can just keep them. So let's explain a bit what is going on with the defaults. The first question is whether you would like to use LXD clustering. LXD uh, clustering is something very nice and good. It makes sense here if you have several computers, you install 
LXD on each of them, and you want to join them in a cluster. Uh, this is for advanced users, and I, do, and I recommend not to do it, because if the LXD are joined into a cluster, you cannot break them up. You cannot break them up. So uh, there is clustering support, and this is how you activate it. Uh, the next uh, block of questions, which I have, they are bold. This is all have to do with where to store the containers. Uh, here, I just press Enter. This makes sense for Ubuntu, and it does everything, and I kept the defaults. First question, do you want to configure a new storage pool? Storage pool is a pool of a location where you can just put stuff, put files. So default is yes, I press Enter, yes. Name of the new storage pool. How do you want to name it? It gives me as default the name default. I accept it. I press Enter. Next. Name of the storage backend to use. There are several. There is ButterFS. Uh, at the end is ZFS. But there is even more. There is Ceph, which is di distributed um, uh, storage. There is uh, LVM. And there is also something called DIR. Uh, DIR means it comes from directory. Uh, if, for some specific cases, your system does not support either ButterFS or ZFS or anything else, DIR means that it will put the container files into a subdirectory. It's not very efficient, in, efficient in, in terms of speed, but it's something that will work everywhere. It will make it a bit slower, but it will work. Uh, for testing, if you want to use it, um, DIR is an acceptable option. OK? And then it asks, do you want to create a new ZFS pool? We put yes. Um, would you like to use an existing block device? Now, this is a question. If you have a spare partition, let's say with 50 gigabytes or 100 gigabytes, spare partition which is empty, at this point you can say, would you like to use an existing block device? Here you type yes. And it will tell you the name, and it will ask you for the name of the device, slash dev slash SDA5, or whatever it is. OK. But over there, I have clicked, I have pressed Enter. So there is no existing block device. And then it asks me for the, for the size. Because I'm using a file, I can specify what is the size of the file. Size of in gigabytes of the new loop device. Uh, Default is 15 gigabytes. I press Enter, and it's using 15 gigabytes. And that's the configuration for the storage. Uh, the rest, uh, there is a question about mass server. This, is, again, has to do with uh, advanced uh, when you use servers. Uh, just a footnote, mass means it's metal as a service. It, it has to do with uh, uh, advanced uh, Ubuntu stuff. Uh, it has to do with, uh, if you have uh, a server, you can install mass so that this server, which is bare metal, appears as if it is a virtual machine. So that's the, the main idea. We, we keep no and we continue. And the next is, is asks us whether we want to create a, a, a new local bridge so that all the containers will have internet connectivity, they can communicate with each other, and they can have access to the internet. These are the default settings. And we say, yeah, we want to create a bridge. It will be called LXD BR0, LXD Bridge 0. And it will have access to IPv4 and IPv6. Um, and it will be auto-configured. We just keep all the auto stuff. Um, so these are, these are the important stuff important questions, we have sorted them out, and there are three more at the end. This one is, would you like LXD to be available over the network? Uh, this is, you would enable this one here if you wanted to communicate, if you want to get LXD version, uh, LXD installations to communicate with each other. You can copy containers from one to another. Here we keep for now no. If we want to enable it, enable, we can enable it later. He then asks whether we want stale cached images to be updated automatically. Um, here we, we select yes. It is a safe option. It has to do with container images that we have downloaded 
Uh, these images, they are updated every, let's say, week or so. So by leaving it there, it means that when we want to create a new container in one month, uh, it will automatically, it will have downloaded it. So when we create it, it will happen very quickly. Otherwise, if it is not updated, it will have to download it, all right? Uh, and at the end it says, do you want to show you the whole configuration that we just g gave earlier? So if you press yes, it will just show you the configuration. Uh, it will show you the configuration to have it of all these things that have been done, that have happened here. All right. So that is LXD in it. We have done that and we are ready to, uh, to go. Um, let's see a bit about uh... so this is the LXE command uh, we're gonna see and the LXE command has several sub um, sub commands all these things here you can run LXE and then select one of those and this is sub commands that will do for you uh, from the from the from the initialization we have done, we have created. Uh, Where we can see LXC storage. From the initialization, initialization we have uh, done earlier. Um, we can use LXC storage list to show us what is uh, the storage that we have created. And actually here we, it shows that there is this with name default that we saw earlier. It is ZFS and this is the location of the file, of the file which is 15 gigabytes. This is the location where it's gonna be putting all the containers. Uh, LXC storage list to show us this We then type LXC network list to show us the available networks. And here we can see that, there we are. This is LXD BR0, the bridge. And as you can see, it is managed. When it says here managed, it means that it is managed by, um, it is managed by LXD. So LXD can do configuration for us with this bridge. Um, this is the Ethernet interface, and this is the Wi-Fi interface of the laptop. Uh, the other thing that was created within its initialization is the profile, LXC profile list. Um, uh, I created this one later, so by default you have the default you have the default profile, which has the configuration that whenever you create a container, it's gonna be up, uh, this profile will be applied to it. So this is gonna be like the initial default configuration for any new containers. If you want to see what is the, inside this uh, profile, you type LXC profile, show, and the name of the profile. So any new container that will be created, it will have uh, an Ethernet interface uh, from the bridge we have created, and uh, the storage will be added into, uh, and this is the configuration for the storage, where we put this ZFS stuff. So network and storage. That's the configuration of the very basic default profile. Here you can add some other stuff so that when you create a container, the container, the container will, be have, will have more functionality. But the basic stuff is this one here. So at this point, we have, um,
So at this point, we have uh, initialized LXD. We are ready to use it, and we can create our first container. But the thing is this that, okay, we create a container, but what version of, what, what container in image do we use? So LXD as a project provides uh, a list of uh, container images. So you can just use these container images, download them, and install them. Uh, there are two repositories of container images. There is one called Ubuntu, and another, another one called Images. And these are the web pages where you can go in there and you can see what is, uh, um, what, what is available. Uh, so you can see them from the web. If you, if you want to go, you can see them from the web. Or you can use LXD commands to see uh, the list of the enabled, uh, con of the available container images. Uh, and here's an example of how the naming will work. Uh, there is this uh, colon. Uh, on this side of the colon is the name of the repository. It's either Ubuntu or images. And on the other side is the shortcut of the name of the container image. Uh, most Linux distributions are available, they are supported, and they are, are available in this, uh, in the repositories. Um, there is a very tiny difference. If you want to use Ubuntu container images, use the first repository. If you want to use anything else, use the second. In the second repository, you can also find the same almost the same Ubuntu images. It's just that in this, uh, in this repository, the, um, the container images for Ubuntu, they have some extra functionality. When you create a container from them, uh, they will add you the non-root account Ubuntu. So it will, they will add some tiny things. After a bit, I think that uh, both these repositories will become the same. A few years ago, there was bigger difference. Now they're sort of somewhat like merging. So if you want Ubuntu container images, use the first. If you want anything else, use the second. So how do we get the list of uh, images? There is the command lxc image. And from there, you can see that there is the list. LXC image list. And then you type the name of the container, of the name of the repository. LXC image, I want you to do a list from the repository Ubuntu with a colon. That's correct. So now it goes to the repository, and it gives uh, all the available images for Ubuntu. Uh, this is a very big list because it shows, uh, apart from uh, Intel 64-bit, it shows all architectures. So for each version you have, this is the PowerPC 64. Um, this is the ARM V7, okay? So here it shows you all the versions. So in this list, if you look at it in detail, it, sh it shows that you have Ubuntu 18.04, you have the recent one 19.04, you, have, you have also older ones, and they go back to version 12.04. 12.04, which was seven years ago. So you, have, you can choose so many versions. If you, ha if you have the name, you can use that to show information. So 
one of the problems that people have with LXD is that, okay, I want to start a container, but I want to get the list of the names of the container images so I can start them. If you use LXC list, it's gonna have a very big list. So people like get confused uh, about the name. The name is on the first column of the list. So what I have done here and uh, in LXD, you have, you have many aliases for the name of the, conte of the container images, many aliases. So here for 1804, you can uh, specify it either as 1804, the name of the container, or you can use any of the rest. If you don't want to use 1804, you can even use B for Bionic. You can even type LTS, and it will work as well. All these things are aliases. Personally, I prefer to be explicit, and I use 1804. Um, so we have seen, about, we talked about repositories of containers. Um, let's see the list of the repositories, the repositories that LXD knows. So there is a command for that as well, and it goes like this, LXC remote, I'm gonna do LXC remote list. So LXC remote list, this shows us uh, the repositories of containers. Uh, this one is the Ubuntu uh, containers, and here is the URL. And this is the images repository, and that is the URL. But you will notice that there are two more. Uh, there is one called Ubuntu Daily. Uh, if you, there are some specific daily images that are generated every day. If you want to do some testing, you can go to Ubuntu Daily and get stuff from there. And there is also something called local. So lo this repository local is, is the container images that are being, that is on our installation of LXD. Those that are cached on our LXD are in this local uh, repository. Okay. Um, so we more or less have seen um, what we need. The next step, I think, will be to create our first um, container. Uh, to create a container, uh, we, we use the launch command. Uh, this is the launch command. The first line says how to do it. Um, so what I will do is LXC launch. I'm gonna use the repository Ubuntu and I will use the container image 1804. And then I will type the name of the name I want to give to this container once it gets created. So this command will create uh, a container from this container image and it will name it my container. Now if you forget to type the name at the end, how you want to be named, how your container will be named, then LXD will, will generate a name for you. It has a dictionary list so we will choose at random two words, put them together, and it will give you a name. Sometimes these are very funny names, so I recommend you to, when you create a container, just put the name that you want there, okay? You can put any name you want. There are some characters uh, that are not permitted, uh, the idea is that you have you need a name that is a, a valid host name. So whatever character is valid is for a valid host name is good to put there. So now we have created the container. Okay. Uh, I use LXC list to show me the running containers of this installation of LXD. If you see here, there are two containers. Uh, for now, disregard the one called GUI. I have created it already for the next part of the presentation, of the workshop. So this one is like already available. 
and we do not get stuck with internet. So the important part here is this my container. There is a container called my container. It is running, and it got this um, private IP address, uh, IPv4 and then IPv6. So our container is up and running, and we can use it now. So what can we do with a container we have created? We can get a shell into it. To get a shell, we use LXC uh, exec for execute. Then we put the name of the container, my container. And then we type a command we want to run inside the container. Uh, for example, we want to put, let's say, ID. Uh, who knows what happened there? Huh? Uh, so what happens now is that we can use LXC exec, the name of the container, and we run and we use commands there. So whatever command we run, it will run in the container and it will show us the output. So the id command ran inside the container, and it gave us this output. When I run this command in the container, uh, the id command is not inside slash bin. It is in a different place. And because it could not find this command, it returned without showing me anything. But running commands like that is not very funny. So what we will do is uh, we will run we can actually run the command like that. Type the command. So we, we, have the, uh, we have a shell inside the container. OK. All these files are, all these processes are inside the container. Uh, we are as root. All this stuff is in the container. We can actually do, if you are, if you fancy, we can do things like that. And this will, let's say, will remove all stuff from the container. But it's OK for us. It's, it's going to, uh, containers are expendable. We can do things like this. It will, everything will disappear from there. We can kill the container, remove it, and we are, we are fine. OK. So this was the LXC exec, my container, and then bash. Uh, so I have a question now for you guys. Uh, what, what will this command do? Okay, let's see that. So what happened here is that uh, I use the command that has a parameter. And in Unix uh, way, if you have a command like that with a parameter, this parameter will go to the LXE command. And the LXE command has no minus L, and it will tell you here that, OK, I do not know anything about minus L. So the way to solve this issue is to use the Unix way to solve it, which means that uh, over there, You use this dash dash, which means that it, it tells the shell on the host that up to here you stop processing, and the rest is going to be, you use them verbatim. You don't want LXC to do any processing from here onwards. And by doing so, let's see what we get. We get, we get something, OK? That's, that's very, very important, and a common mistake when people do. Uh, for some commands, you will need to do, will need to use the dash. Uh, this command is OK. It will work. So it's good as a habit to use the dash dash so that uh, you will not get surprised.
So we get again a shell inside, and let's see what's going on with uh, users. There is a user called Ubuntu, uh, which means that uh, how can we get a shell inside this container as user Ubuntu? One way to do this is to LXE exec my container, sudo. We can, we can use this thing. So what we do here is we, we get a shell inside, we run sudo, and we straight away run sudo to user Ubuntu, and we make this one a login shell. And how does that look? It gives us a very nice uh, non-root shell inside the container. Um, so that's one way to get the non-shell, uh, the non-root uh, shell inside. Uh, in the discussion forum of LXD, there was a discussion about how to make this even better. And uh, some very smart person created uh, uh, an alias. So now this is a new thing, aliases. We make a small parenthesis, alias, Alexi alias. Why does it work? This is a very tricky question. I run this command inside the container. I have to go out. So here, uh, to make our lives easier, easier, what we can do is we can, we can create aliases for the commands because the LXE commands become very big we can create an alias. Just like we had alias with the sudo and so on, we can create an alias so that the command will be shorter. So instead of running sudo uh, to get the non-root shell, we can do this nice commands. And you don't need to write this one. Uh, on the discussion forum, there is, uh, you can go and uh, copy paste it and apply it to your computer as well. So what I have done is I've, uh, I'm using two aliases. One is login and w another one is Ubuntu. So what I do now is if I want to get a shell as Ubuntu, I will do LXE Ubuntu, the name of the alias, and the container name. And that's it. It's a more fancy way to get the shell. Still, you can use anything else or everything we showed earlier, but this is like uh, somewhat uh, more fancy. Uh, so, either way will be fine. Uh, let's do something with uh, this container. So, the, our very first uh, test will be to, uh, um, if we want to install applications in the uh, software in the container, in the container, we'll need to do an update. The reason why we have to do the update is that uh, the container image does not have the very latest uh, package list, so that when we want to install something, it might work uh, if the package has not been updated since the creation of the container image. Uh, so instead of, let's say, being like, it might work, it might not work, it's good, it's good to have as a practice to do sudo apt update. update. Uh, what can we test inside this container? Um, let's do, what we will do is we will install uh, a, a web server. 
and then access this web server from the host. All right. If I sit. Um, we're installing the Nginx uh, uh, web server. So the Nginx web server is running inside the container. Um, how do we verify that it is running? We can use commands like uh, like this. Nginx is running. Also, there is SSD and so on. So in that in the container, the uh, the web server is running. Um, the files of the uh, of the web server they are inside this directory in var www.html. We made the. Welcome to Nginx running in LXD. The IP address of the of the container is this one here. Um, No, there is no difference at all. Um, I, I use Nginx because uh, uh, it be, it's becoming, it's, it is becoming more popular than Apache. Uh, the, the new coolness in web servers is Nginx. Is, uh, at the moment, Apache has the biggest share because it is the older project. Uh, it just, Nginx is some, it's just cool. Uh, it's uh, no technical difference. And it works. So, um, so we have a web server running inside a container, uh, and we can access it from uh, from the host. The issue is how do we, how can we make this uh, web server running in the container accessible from the network? Because at the moment it is only accessible from the host. It has a private IP address, and for this to work, what we can do is we can use a, a proxy device. So let's expose this uh, web server from the container and make it accessible from the host. I don't know what is the, net, the configuration of the Wi-Fi here. It might be possible for you to, once we do it, it might be possible for you to visit this link. So we'll see. Okay, so we'll create something called a proxy device, which is it, it exposes ports of the container to the local network, and it exposes it. Uh, so it does this sort of like it, it does the proxying. So this is the command that uh, we will be using, and uh, and actually it is ready-made available there. 
So let's, let's explain part by part. We use the subcommand config, lxc config, the noun we want to configure, to configure a device. And we want to add a device to the container called my container. And the name of the device will be my port 80. And, and this device will be called, it, it will be a type proxy device. And the parameters are that it's going to be listening on TCP on the host at all interfaces at port 80. And it will make a connection. So and then it will make a connection. Whoever accesses the host, the laptop, at port 80, uh, their connection will be, the connection will be forwarded, proxied to uh, to the container at this at the loopback address at port 80. So this is the full command to uh, um, to expose the port. So we have done that. Um, I'm trying to find the IP address of my uh, laptop. So this is the moment where you shine and you type that IP address and we'll see whether it works or not. Uh, if you cannot see it, I can... Uh, normally it should work unless there is some security features on the Wi-Fi network. So can, you, can someone do this? Uh, okay. Better? Uh, don't put this last part there. Eh? Post to your laptop on port 80. Uh, if the port is used, used uh, it will not work. If it's used, if the port that we want to connect from one side to the other if the port is used, then the creation will fail. So in that case, we'll change the port to something else. It will give a message when it says, if it fails. Uh, I'm using, that's a good question. I use the, the Ubucon. I think, it has a hash, I think it has a hash at the beginning. The Ubucon. I think you're connected with Wi Fi, with uh, mobile internet, right? You use Wi Fi. So does it work? I, I didn't try, I just connected to my own phone. To your own, huh? Okay. So someone, like, give it a try. And not working. So okay, this is a it's a Wi-Fi uh, thing, uh, security. Yes. Uh, if you use the proxy device as I wrote it there, then uh, uh, the service from the container will be uh, exposed to the, to the IP address of your laptop, of your desktop, of your work computer. And then others will be able to connect to you to the IP address of your computer. 
uh, if you want to proxy it to make it available to the internet, you, f you have to do some extra steps. So what happens here is that we have exposed the web server to, to the host. Uh, this thing, um, yeah, we have exposed it. Yes. It's this command. Um, okay, running a Nginx as a service is just okay. It's, it's not. It's very simple. You can use if you use Node.js. Uh, that's actually the most common uh, use to, to have for this. You can install them in there, and then you can do all this uh, crazy stuff. And Node.js will be isolated, limited inside the container, and you can access it from the host. Like this is where it will make like very big uh, sense. So you don't want to mess up your uh, host with this. Yeah. So the question is, uh, over here, why did they put uh, connect to the local host address while I could, I could use this one as well? So this is like, in this specific case, is the same. But in terms of usability, uh, because I, I want this command to be as simple as possible, uh, since it works to put here the loopback, I'm going to put this address, which is the loopback address. It, it, makes the commands, it, it makes the command easier. If I want to create, let's say, multiple uh, containers and then use uh, proxy devices, because this thing will be the same for each container, I'm happy that it stays the same. It's very important to, look in, to, to try this kind of like things. OK? Uh, yeah. So we have created the, um, <coughs> the container. And we can run all these uh, services inside the container, play around, and then we can stop it and delete it, and it is gone. Um, the next thing I would like to uh, go is, um, actually, let's see what is in the slides. We have seen the remote and the image commands. Uh, here we do, we launch, we list, we exact, we exec in the container. Uh, here is the liars uh, to make it easier. We de stop, delete, and then it's gone. Okay, let's see some more fancy stuff. Uh, command line tools and services, they are nice and okay. But what can we do? Can we run graphical... In graphical uh, programs inside the container and see the output on the host. So this is the next thing we will see how we can do. So I have to do first this and then this. So I, I already created uh, such a special container and I called it uh, GUI. So this container here is just like any other container, uh, but I have fixed it with proxy devices and so on, so that if I run something like uh, X clock, it will appear over there. Um, the mouse is over there. And if I run something like GLX gears, It's over there. It is possible to run a browser. It's possible to run, I don't know, Eclipse, Web Store. Um, it, it's possible to run anything. 
and it's also possible to run even games. How, how do we create this container? Okay. So the issue is uh, how easy it is to create such, such a container. Uh, we go back and we, search, we do LXE profile list. And if you see here is I created an additional profile called GUI. And in that profile I have added all the configuration that is required to create a GUI container. So if you want to do this on your computer, what you will need to do is take the GUI profile, put it on your computer, and create then containers using this profile. And that's it. So we will see what is inside this, con this profile in a second. But I will show you that once you have the profile, what, how, how do you create a GUI container? So the way it works is that uh, LXC list. Let's kill the my container. LXC is stop my container. Nginx web server gone. So we will we'll create a container called my container, which is going to be a GUI container. So here how it will work. We do LXC launch. Actually, it's the same command. It's as we have done before, but now we have to add some stuff here. We want to use the, both the default profile, which has uh, storage information, and then, then we want to add on top of that the GUI profile. It looks like, um, yeah, default, huh? So what happens now is that uh, it is creating the container, and the content, and this uh, container has some special instructions inside. Uh, that will download from the internet uh, the graphic libraries and whatever is really required. So now it has been created, but it will take a few seconds. It will take, in this case, uh, a few minutes so that it will download all the rest of the stuff. So while we are waiting for my container to become a GUI container, let's go and see what is inside the GUI profile. It's not so much so many so many things. So what we have done here is that one example is that we use a display uh, environment variable, and we set that variable to a value, and then we use some cloud config configuration, and we install some uh, libraries. Uh, these libraries, in this specific case, you can see that there are quite too many for a standard case. This is the setting. This is the specific libraries that I use for uh, when you use gaming with Steam. In a normal case, you, can, uh, you don't need any of this. You just need this part here. So anyway, the important parts are here. This proxy device for uh, graphics and that proxy device for audio. So. When, uh, so from inside the container, we can have both uh, graphics with acceleration, and also we can have audio, pulse audio. So it works just fine. So I will try to explain a bit uh, about uh, all these things. One, two, and a small one here, three. Uh, this part here, which is the most important. So what we do here is that uh, we create a proxy device that links the the Unix socket of the X server from the host, uh, it makes it available inside the container. So 
this listed command, which means that it creates uh, an abstract, abstract unique, unique socket inside the container, with, which has this name, and it connects it to the existing Unix uh, socket of the X server on the host. OK. Um, that's the part there. This part here, it takes the uh, pulse audio socket from the host and puts it in the container. So in the container, they will be able to use this socket to play audio. And you can hear the audio from the pulse audio of the host. And this part here is about the acceleration. It makes available the, uh, the GPU, the graphics card of the host inside the container. And, and that's it. Okay, this is a bit an advanced question. Uh, it has to do with uh, the way Pulse Audio works. Uh, if Pulse Audio supported abstract Unix, so Unix sockets, it would make the life much easier, but does, does not uh, create uh, an abstract Unix, Unix socket. So we have to do the disk uh, proxy device. After many drives. Actually, in previous versions, I was using the same type disk, even for this one here. But by using a abstract proxy, abstract Unix socket for the X server, it makes it much uh, better. Uh, which means here is that you can have, let's say, even GUI snap packages in the container running and running well. It gives access. Uh -huh. So as it is now, it gives full access to the program running inside the container to the X server of the host. This means that we only do this for whatever programs we are trusting. It's Um, let's go into the byte container and see what is going on. So it has been installing a lot of stuff. Uh, so we, uh, we get the shell when it's ready. And we type and we go into search bar log. We are using clouding it. Uh, because of the slowness of the network, uh, it hasn't finished installing the appropriate packages. So it will take some more time to finish uh, for this uh, GUI container to work. So instead of like waiting for this uh, to finish, we will go to the ready-made container and uh, do some more stuff there. So this one I prepared uh, earlier before starting the presentation. So, and we actually show it, we, we, we look at it a few mo moments ago. So this is a GUI container, and we want to check now to verify that uh, graphics programs work. So as we showed earlier, I used first X clock. Now X clock is very significant. When you run X clock and it works, it means that the X lib the low-level protocol of X works well. This will work even if we have not worked with hardware acceleration for the graphics. There is no OpenGL. So when this thing works, it means that the very basic of X works, and we are good and fine. OK, so this is the very first thing to do, to see whether X is working. And the next part is to use uh, GLX gears. It comes to this uh, screen first, so give me a moment. So if, if, this, uh, if this works, it means that we have uh, 
hardware acceleration for the graphics card. We are ready to start playing games. Uh, that's very, very important. Uh, that's a frame rate there because of uh, uh, V-Sync. It's synchronized. And also you can see GLX info. You can verify from here that uh, it sees uh, what is on the host. There is a direct uh, rendering is yes. Everything is nice and cool. Uh, so if, if you want to, do, to use this, uh, you just need to use the, um, to create the profile, the extra profile, and then apply this profile to your containers and you will be able to run graphics programs inside the container. As simple as that. What is doing full screen? What are you referring to? It works at full screen as well. How do the control work between the container and the host? It works. I, I, I played a few games and it works. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that it, it works as if it is running on the host. There is no, let's say, difference. I did not notice something specific. I mean, if you try it, it should work. OK. Ah, there's one thing about containers on public land. Okay, so uh, the containers we have created, these containers are running uh, in a private network. They are not exposed to the local network uh, uh, around us. So if, if, if someone from the local network wants to access them, you have to use a proxy device. However, with LXD, you can use something called uh, a Mac VLAN, Mac VLAN or bridge, which means that when you create a container, uh, you can get the container to be exposed. The whole container will be exposed to the LAN network. So, I don't know if it, it, if it makes sense. It's like, uh, this works, this does not work with Wi-Fi. It does not work with Wi-Fi because of the way of, if you have Wi-Fi and you have security, uh, uh, WPA or whatever security. Uh, this forbids the client to have two MAC addresses. So this thing here works when you have an uh, uh, Ethernet card. Uh, when you have Ethernet card with cables and stuff, because over there it's, uh, there is no port security by default. So if I had now an Ethernet card uh, on my laptop, I could, create, let's, I could create, let's say, five, six, seven containers with MAC VLAN and they all will appear with their own IP address on the local network. And they will be accessible by default by anyone on the no lo local network by connecting to their IP address. And to do that, what we will need to do is we will create an additional um, uh, profile or change the, we can create an additional LXD profile and have this uh, uh, and change the instruction, the configuration for the network. So here I just show you how it is. By default, if you remember, uh, this is the default stuff in the, in the profile. And if you change it into this, you, you put here Mac VLAN, and then you change the parent from that. You, uh, this is the Ethernet device of the, of the host. You do this change, and then you can uh, uh, start the container and the container will be exposed, it will get an IP address from your home router. For example, when you use PyHole for the, um, you know, when you use all these utilities, uh, you can put this software inside an LXD container. Okay, there are two ways to do this kind of thing. One is with Mac VLAN, and the other one is with Bridged. You have to create a bridge uh, attach a bridge onto your host Ethernet interface. Either two will work. I prefer this one because you don't have to create a bridge on your host. This one is, uh, you just put it there and it will work. Okay. 
I just cannot demonstrate it because of the Wi-Fi. You don't need to make any changes to IP tables. It, it adds, uh, are you sure about that? Are you sure it will uh, add? Uh, as far okay, uh, as far as I remember, it will not add any IP table rules. The way that Mac VLAN, as far as I remember, okay, we can discuss it later any time you want. As far as I remember, the, the way Mac VLAN works is that the Linux kernel uh, will take care of it. It's just the Linux kernel that does that has the implementation of Mac VLAN, and and will make sure that uh, it works for you automatically. Uh, as far as I remember, it does not touch. When you enable this thing, it does not give you additional uh, IP table rules to make it work. Uh, so we have seen uh, uh, several commands from here. For example, from the first section, we have seen ex ex exec. You can use exec to execute commands in the container. There is also another command called console. You can use LXC console, the name of the container. And what you get is you get a console to the container for those who need this. Uh, anyone familiar with the Linux console from a long time ago? Uh, long time ago when you started Ubuntu, when you started the Linux, well, a Linux distribution, you will get a login prompt, no graphics. So with LXC console, you can get this console thing. Uh, you may not be familiar. Control AQ to get away. Uh, this gives you a console access. Uh, it has some significance for some people. So if I were to restart the container, it will show me the, the boot up, let's say, messages. That's the thing with the console. So it is there. Control A, Q, and that's it. What else there is there? There is LXC config, LXC info. LXC config on a container will show you configuration of the container. LXC info will show you information. For example, how many megabytes went in, out, and so on. Okay. Uh, you can export and import uh, container, containers and container images. Uh, for the life cycle of a container, you can do a init, you can start, you can stop, you can restart the container, you can rename it, and you can delete it. Full life cycle. And then there's this thing, file. Uh, if you are familiar with Android and you want to connect the phone to the computer, you can use ADB pull and push. So how we can do this thing with LXZ? Uh, so we are here in Ubuntu, home Ubuntu. We create a file. So there is a file called myfile.txt. Okay. So now we are on the host, and we want to grab that file and from the container and put it on the host. Here we use the lxc file subcommand. lxc file. Here we want to do, there is push and pull. In this case, we are on the host. We want to do a pull. So we want to pull. Okay. Next, we type the name of the container. GUI, and then the full path. Um, <laughs> now, many people kind of like, uh, they might make a mistake for this. So, LXE file pool. Now, the first here is the name of the container. And without adding a space, you, you type the full path.
and here is the file. Okay. Uh, now we are on the host. Let's, cha let's change. We made a small addition to the file, and we want to put it back. So LXE file. Now it is push. And what we want to push, we want to push my file txt. And then we type the name of the destination. We put the name of the container. We put the full path. Yeah, we don't need to put the, the name. It already knows the name. So now I'm ready to press Enter. And what will happen? Will work? It's not going to work. Because it's a small detail I want you to learn. So a common mistake when people do is that uh, if you do not put a slash here, uh, it's going to put it, it's going to re replace the directory uh, Ubuntu. So you have to put a slash here. And let's see whether it works. And it worked. OK. You either specify, if you need to specify the full name, but if you are pushing stuff in the container, make sure that the, at the directory there is a slash at the end. Common mistake. Um, we have pushed the file. Uh, anyone? Yeah? Natural. Um, I suppose uh, Stefan will know about it. <laughs> you can ask. <laughs> um, let's do a bit of a test. OK, we are on the host now. I want to use LXE exec to see the contents of the my, <laughs> my file file. So what kind of thing, what do we write next? LXE exec. And we have to decide of what is the next information we have to give to the command. The name of the container, OK. And then uh, we can put this dash dash just to make sure. And then we type the command, as the command will need to work inside the container. So to see the contents of the file, which command shall we use? Huh? Ah, actually, we can use cut as it is. And then we type the full path. Huh? And that's it. And it worked. It uses the path of the root. If the root can run the command without specifying the full path, then it will work here. So since what? Oh. OK, at least it's not the command. OK, yeah. So yeah, it, it, it works as well. Uh, OK. Um, what else we can uh, learn here? OK. Without the root context? Uh, yeah. I mean, it just makes the command a bit longer. Uh, okay. I mean, it's, uh, it just makes it a bit longer. This is an example. Eh? It used to do with uh, login with a user parameter. 
Uh, here is a summary of the changes, uh, of the additions we have added to make a GUI container, just to like have an idea. Uh, uh, we use the, and this specific one, it works with NVIDIA. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you run the, you add the NVIDIA runtime equals true, and this makes sure that whatever is required for NVIDIA will work, and will work well. Uh, we install these packages. This one is for the X-Clock uh, utility for testing. This is for the GLX gears. And this is for Pulse Audio to install just the very basic packages that they work. And at the very end, we use the uh, MyGPU uh, GPU device and uh, the socket stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, I wanted to make it this short, so I omitted things that, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, they, so this one is not in the, Okay, there is a thing called ID map. So this is sort of like, uh, it does the magic. Um, it, it becomes a bit complicated, but in, in the, how do you call it? Uh, to make it short, uh, uh, what it does is that it makes, uh, it makes the container appear as if it is a process running on the host. And uh, when you have Unix sockets, uh, one of the security features of the Unix socket is the user ID of the process that uh, accesses the Unix socket. Uh, so to be able to make this thing work, we use something called an ID map, which makes the process, uh, a, a, process a user ID of the container to match that one of the host. I don't want to go into too much details for this. It's, for this, you can just, you can read it from the, um, um, fr from the internet. Um, so there's stuff. Uh, for me, this is the most important part of LXD is that you don't mess the host. If you want to do something, just put it in a container, do the work, and if you don't need it anymore, just erase the container. For me, that's like the main message of the whole day. Uh, oh yeah, this is the, uh, the, the support forum for LXD. is this one here, discuss.linuxcontainers.org. That's the support forum. Um, I have uh, sp I spent quite a lot of time on this uh, support forum. And also on my blog, I, uh, I have created quite a few um, um, tutorials. So uh, on, this, on the forum, I have created a, a post and which shows all the tutorial all the tutorials that I have created. And in there you can see how to create uh, GUI containers. You can see how to use Mac VLAN, how to use bridge, networking, and more. One of the latest uh, tutorials that I wrote was uh, uh, how to use the Kali. You, you, are you familiar with Kali Linux, the security? So one, one of the latest, uh, well, let's see that. So it covers a lot of things there. Um, using Arduino, using Julia, Jupyter, uh, Docker, and whatever. Um, pick and whatever you would like to see from there. Uh, one of the things I wrote was about uh, Kali Linux. 
uh, Kali Linux security distribution. So it kind of like uh, they, the, the people from the project, they have created the container image for Kali Linux, but they have not written any documentation like how to use it. Because Kali Linux, if you know, it, it's supposed to be working inside the, uh, it's supposed to be working inside the, a virtual machine. That's like the common thing you can use Kali Linux. But they have created the container image. So what I did was, okay, I'm gonna use this container image and write some tutorial about it. Uh, the most common thing you will expect is to create some network, to, to, to use some network tool from uh, Kali Linux, which does not have, let's say, uh, too many requirements. <laughs> However, what I did was I wrote uh, about, uh, uh, I used uh, the container image uh, for uh, this, I, I, for what we call Wi-Fi cracking, which is not something that you will expect to do with a, a container, because the container w is not supposed to have access to the Wi-Fi card. So the way to do it is, uh, uh, to, the way to make this one work is to, uh, and I make it big. Now if you notice here, lxconfig device, add, da da da. And what we do here is we add uh, a nick device of type physical. So what that means is that there is support here in LXD so that if you have a network card on your host, you can choose to take that network card and put it inside a specific container, and this network card will be will disappear from the host. Can you use other hardware other than GPU or other other You can plug other devices to your container, like the storage USB device. Yeah, is uh, there is a post about if you if you do Android development. Uh, what you can do is you can connect a phone. It's USB, okay? It's standard USB. So what you can do is you can use this thing uh, to uh, connect the phone so that you can run Android Studio from inside the LXD container. It's a common thing to do. So you can do that. Um, the USB. You mean if you have two devices which are the same vendor and... Uh, but you use it like a port thing and you use the port. You can like control the port. This is what I know about from the whole clustering of the virtualization. Shit change, you always can choose another device for instance. Because if that is, if that is the phone, it's like the, the Google Alliance thing, you know? Uh -huh. so you disconnect or something, you connect the app. Um, uh, I'm not sure about that, about the port. Um, the way I have, pr uh, probably it's possible, the way I have used it is to specify the vendor ID. Oh, so if you just, you can specify just the vendor ID, not even the product ID, just the vendor ID, and then since it is the only device there, it's gonna like take it and push it. Okay, so here I'm using the NIC physical thing. So the Wi-Fi went just inside the container, Um, you put it into monitor mode, and you run all of the stuff, um, uh, Kismet and so on. And then to top it up, if you want to do, if you want to use tools like, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, that require the GPU, uh, then you can uh, enable CUDA in the Kali container. Uh, by setting the NVIDIA runtime. And then you can use uh, even more stuff. Um, yeah. So the main website for LXC capital letters and LXD capital letters is linuxcontainers.org. 
these are managed by uh, uh, Canonical, uh, both of these uh, projects. The discussion forum, the support forum is discuss.linuxcontainers.org. And uh, so yeah, um, you can go there, create an account, post your question, and you will get your, um, you'll get an answer. Uh, the developers of LXD, they are there, so they can actually, if it's a difficult question, they can uh, um, help you out with this. Uh, I think this is, uh, this is what I wanted to present to you. Um, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot.